Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited to bring another little card to you today that uses my Cricut to make a shaker card. I've had a really good reaction from the last one and lots of questions and lots of people asking if I show different ways to do this. So here we go. We're gonna start in design space. Super easy, just open a new project. Every time I start making the pieces for a card in design space, I draw up my card base and I work with cards that are five by seven inches. So I put it landscape or portrait, depending on the design I'm going for. Usually portrait, that just seems to be the kind of cards that I go for. And today I'm working on a card that has a, like a Polaroid. And I'm gonna make that and it takes me like two seconds. So what I've done is use my shapes to make a square. I've unlocked it with that little lock button down in the corner so that it means I can, you know, make my sides different. It won't just make a square bigger or smaller. I can turn it into a rectangle, play around with the dimensions a little bit. And then I've made a smaller square and place that on top of this rectangle shape that I've just made. And in my actions, I've highlighted the two of these and then selected attach so that my machine knows I want that square on the middle to be cut from the outer Polaroid frame. And as you can see, I've locked it and now it's just gonna hold my ratio that I've set for them. And then I can play with how big or small it is and it won't warp the shape, just the size. So here I am planning on where I'm going to put that on my card. And this extra piece that I'm showing you, this, I like to really visualize what is happening in my design space so that when I make my card, things have already you know, been planned and make a bit of sense. So this red, it's not even gonna be red on the final product. I just needed a different color. And that's going to be just my background paper. So in doing this, I can see um, how much of a border I'm going to have around my piece. And I can play with my Polaroid here and make sure it's the right size. I needed to duplicate that a lot. So I go to actions, I duplicate it, and it just replicates it perfectly, giving me identical pieces to work with. Here I've gone from canvas to make, so my mats are here, and this is where I am just condensing things. I've picked that my size is actually A4, not 12 by 12, so that I can work with the pieces of the right sizing for minimal waste. And before we cut that out, I just wanted to show you this real quick. This is what I use instead of like a regular white cardstock. It's not quite as thick as cardstock, but it is much thicker than like a regular ream of paper. This was given to me when I had finished helping someone make something for their office. Um, we were making snowflakes and she was done with it and she was like, do you want it? And I was like, well, not really. I really don't enjoy working with this stuff. But it's nice and thick and it actually holds all my ink blending really, really well. When I say budget crafter, I have a ream of cheap paper. Um, no 10 packs of perfect white textured cardstock make their way into this house. I just can't afford it. So this stuff's actually really grown on me. I don't feel too bad about using quite a few layers of it. That's why when it comes to things like this, I end up using maybe eight layers of it, 10 layers of it. Whereas you might only need like five or six layers of cardstock. It's also fantastic with my Copic markers. I haven't had any problems with any of my blending. Literally everything that you've seen on my YouTube channel has been using that white paper. So these are the things I'm working with today. I've got my Avery L stamps. I've got my Doodlebug paper. I think I use a few other little Doodlebug things and I have my Copic markers. That was my card base, my pre-cut ones. They're actually very budget friendly. I think I get like a 50 pack for maybe $6 or something. Pre-measured, pre-scored, they're perfect. And then I don't have to worry about buying cardstock purely to turn into my card bases. So here we go, I'm just going to glue all of these layers together except for one. I need one separate for later so that I can stick that over my acetate window at the end. Once they're all stuck together, I run a line of glue all around the middle and then I just smooth it out with my finger. This is kind of like a putty. <laughs> it smooths it all out and makes sure that when this does become a shaker card that all those edges are sealed and that I'm not going to lose any of my shaker elements in there. I then put that under something heavy while it dries because there's lots of layers of glue. Sometimes they warp a little bit. Here is my fail of the week. I didn't end up using this background, but I thought I'd just show you because, man, I have some real clumsy moments lately. <laughs> Terrible. And then this background I thought I'd show you. This was the original background I had decided to use for this card, but then I realized towards the end it really wasn't how I envisioned this card. But I thought I'd show you because it does pop up again a bit later in this video. This whole channel really is just a you know, documentation of my failed attempts <laughs> and my learning. I'm sure I'll look back on these videos in a couple of years and hopefully things will have improved by then. 
So I decided to add a couple more Copics. So this is the final lot of colors that I decided to use. Again, trying to stick to my minimal amount of Copics so that I don't go a little overboard with all the colors I put in. I am going to leave in my coloring and my little white details because I know that there are many people like me who enjoy watching that kind of thing. But if you don't, I think I finish up around seven minutes 45. So here is how they were looking once they were coloured in on that background that I decided I wasn't going to use. So this is the background I did go with. I felt like there was way too much blue in the other one and in my mind I felt like it should have been a rainbow. So I used a whole bunch of inks watered down and I flicked them and splattered them all over one of the offcuts from one of the Polaroids and I just made a mess. <laughs> I just splattered it everywhere it looked good, which was everywhere. <laughs> and then I used, of course, my favorite gold sparkly watercolor pigments. This time I used the white gold. And here we go. I really think that background looked a million times better than the blue one. This is my favorite pen ever. It's a Pilot Friction pen. I love these because they're erasable. Uh, didn't know there was such a thing as erasable pens until I got into planning and it is perfect. It works so much better than using a pencil to make my lines because I can rub it out. But see that? That's like an old habit that will never die. There's no pieces of eraser to brush away, but I still do it. It's a little bit funny. Enough of my weird habits and let's get on to planning this card out. I started adhering all of my little animals to the inside of the frame, not before I chopped off poor little giraffe's horns. Felt a bit bad about that, but they were sticking out from under his hat, so they had to go. Gave it a trim, and then I stuck all his little friends in, trimming where I needed, and just gluing them and adhering them to the back. I use my tape runner for the back of my little background piece here, mostly because it's repositionable while it's still wet. Wet? I think that might be the right term for it. When it comes to little backgrounds like this, if I need to lift it up, that stuff is really handy because I've got that option to keep it moving until it sets and permanently adheres. So I had time to pop that down, decide that I was happy with the position, and then I glued this entire piece with my little creatures down on top of that.
was then time to make these animals little party animals with their little hats. I then left this to dry for a little while, so that's why my background colour keeps changing. We had some very cloudy days as I've been filming lately and working with natural sunlight you just really never know what you're going to get. So here I am just lining the inside edges with some glue just like I did before but this time I've done it so that it adheres properly to that background piece as well so that none of my little shaker elements will get lost. I use some very strong double-sided tape on the entire background of this so that it sticks nice and smooth and flush to my card base. I have never had a problem with this double-sided tape lifting. I think I got it from Riot Art and Craft when they have like the 50% off sales. It's been really, really handy. For my shaker window, I used the same double-sided tape, but just the thinner version. Got that one 50% off as well. I love a sale. And I use that as close as I can get to the very edges of the shaker window so that there's no room for any of my pieces, like my sequins and my stars, to wedge themselves between the acetate and the card. I then ran my powder tool all the way around to reduce static and so that these little pieces have plenty of powder to keep them moving around. I then added my little sequins. I just chose some from a bunch of different mixes that I've got so that it kind of created a rainbow that matched the background. And this is a little bit tricky to see but that is a piece of acetate that I cut. It's just plain clear acetate. I've had so many questions about what I use. It's just plain acetate. I get it from craftonline.com.au. I'll make sure I pop the links in the description below. And then it was just as simple as using my roller tape to put some glue on the back of that top piece that I had been saving and putting that on top just seals it all up. It covers the acetate, it covers my double-sided tape, it just really finishes off the window. And then using some foam dots, I stuck them on the back of my sentiment which was already pre-done. It was a doodle by one, so I didn't even have to stamp that one out. I just stuck it on. And then it was time to adhere all those little hands, and that is my favorite part of using the Avriel Peekaboo stamp range. That's what really sold me on these guys. They're just so cute. And then my favourite part, once everything is put together, I get to give it a shake and hope that none of those pieces get stuck. I felt like my background was just missing something. It was very cute, but my corners were looking a bit bare. So again, I used some of the doodlebug embellishments and a couple of sequins that were matching the blue and orange that seemed to be my most used colours in this card. I then used some of my Nouveau drops to go over those little swirls just to give them a bit of dimension and a bit of extra sparkle because I can't have enough sparkle. And there we have another completed card that I would not have been able to do without my Cricut. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and I'll keep doing the occasional tutorial with my Cricut. And make sure you subscribe if you're new here. I hope you stick around. Bye.